in this first chapter of the textbook where we're talking about an introduction to biology, um, there's some important themes or concepts that will be discussed in the first section. One is that you should be able to identify and describe properties of life, um, and some of these can appear on your tests. Um, then describe the levels of organizations of, li of living things, and then know some examples of different disciplines or like careers in biology. <clears throat> so all living things have um, some characteristics that they have in common or they have that are similar to each other. Um, interestingly to note is that um, they're not always going to have all of these. So be really patient with some of these and just know that usually most organisms have all, if not nearly all of these things. But then other organisms are missing several of these, but they'll have some of them that's usually not classified as a living thing. And we'll talk about that as we go along. So the first property that's listed in your text is order. Living things um, will have an order where they're organized and specifically all the way from like the atomic level all the way to the organism. And even bigger than that, a bunch of organisms can live in like a community and ecosystem and biosphere. Um, so it can be organized in a very, very large way when you think about the organism as part of a bigger whole. Um, however, they're very organized. Um, there's Well, there's some kind of organization there. I mean, you might not see it as organized, but um, there is organization there. Then um, most organisms will um, re respond to a stimuli or sensitivity. Um, so they, something, turning on the lights or touch or something, and there will be a response. Now, clearly you could have um, a living thing that's, for instance, paralyzed or something like that, or you maybe touch a plant and you feel like it's not responding. But the plant, for example, in that example is responding, but it's responding to the light and the soil that it's growing in and things like that. Okay, so the next um, way that all living things, like characteristics that all living things have in common is um, reproduction. This means that they can basically divide cells to reproduce um, offspring. So again, you would say something like, well, you know, a, a female that's 90 years old, maybe she can no longer um, reproduce. Does that mean she's not a living thing? No, that would be silly. Like um, when a, a donkey and a horse um, have a baby, it's a mule. Obviously the mule is still a living thing even though it's not fertile. So um, just generally a species or um, a species should be able to divide and reproduce. Um, then the next thing is organisms can generally adapt. Now, some organisms are more adaptable and some are less adaptable to change or like fit their environment. Some things you change the conditions a little bit and they just die. Some things you can change the conditions a great deal and they can still live. Um, the next one is growth and development. That means that the organism will grow and change over its lifetime. And there are some pretty cute little kittens. I am not a cat person, but they're still pretty cute. Um, the next three are very similar to each other um, and they won't be broken apart on a test. So you don't really need to um, stress too much about the differences in these ones. But um, regulation is basically able to get your internal functions um, to respond to things, to transport nutrients, to respond to stress, um, that your body can basically carry out its basic functions while other things are still going on. Um, the next one is homeostasis, and this is generally more of a um, balance in your body where 
for instance, a balance of temperature, your um, pH, which is your acidity or basicity level in your body, um, these, your body regulates and never lets, for example, your blood get too acidic or too basic. It stays in a very narrow range. And even if you eat or drink something very acidic, your body really tries to like work and get that acid out so that your body can stay um, in a range. Additionally, if you um, get go outside in the heat or go outside in the cold, your body will stay relatively the same temperature and it just adjusts and does different activities that way. Um, and even things like a reptile that gets really cold or can get really hot, their body just has a larger temperature range, but they're still staying in a homeostasis, like a specific range. And the next one is energy processing. This is using different things in the environment and using them for energy for survival. So this can be plants using energy from the sun. It can be like this really cool California condor that's there that's going to eat dead and decaying matter. Um, it could be the polar bear who's going to be hunting, you know, um, larger things, um, maybe fish, maybe like small, small seals, things like that. Um, so they will stay, um, they will get their energy from, from eating. The next thing that I want you to really focus on, um, is to look at the levels of organization in your textbook. So the smallest level of organization is an atom. And this is the tiny little parts that make up, um, everything and you can get even smaller than an atom um, to subatomic particles but for this we're going to start at an atom and then atoms are joined into molecules um, and you can have a molecule of a lot of things like um, you know all of the elements for example on the periodic table like gold silver those are all molecules but additionally here they're saying um, you could have fats or proteins, etc. So bigger than that, those molecules are are organized into organelles, um, which have different different little parts of the cell. And then from their cells, individual cells, and all a lot of cells are different. You know, you have like blood cells or heart cells, or you can have skin cells, and they're all different from each other. The next is a whole group of cells called your tissue. And again, you can have skin tissue or heart tissue. Um, you can have fat tissue. Um, and up from there, you can have the different tissues make organs and organ systems. So um, you can have the whole heart would be an organ, but the whole cardiovascular system, which is all the veins and um, capillaries, and everything else that goes with it, that is going to be an organ system. Um, the next one is you can have organ organisms with populations and communities. So the individual organism, like just, you know, um, one, one, let's say bunny out in a field, you can have one bunny. And then a population is all the bunny's friends that are also in the field. And then a community would be um, the bunny's friends and the squirrels and the little finches that are all in the field together. Maybe a hawk flying around if there's that many bunnies and squirrels. And then bigger than that, you have the ecosystem. Once you have the ecosystem, you're adding in the living and the non-living components of the area that you live. Um, and then the last is the biosphere, which includes all of everything in a very large geographic area. And it shows the whole earth, but really you can have a biosphere that is just, you know, um, just a re like a whole like desert region, for example, or like the southern half of California um, would have, you know, you could call that a biosphere. So be able to, when you do this on a test, to know what it is from, from the least organized 
like the least complex to the most complex and then be able to also look at this from the most complex to the least complex and pay attention to that wording on any tests.